Hello and welcome to the Market Trap on Bloomberg Quint Live. Let's take a look at how the markets have fared today and what they have done through the course of the week. And I'm going to start off with the benchmarks. And for now, we have seen a little bit of a decline in today's job trade, but do remember this is on the back of a very strong week. So we do have Z Entertainment, NDPC and Coal India advancing and on the losing end, Aisha Motors and Tata Motors wielding under pressure to a certain extent on account of, well, uh, the earnings, of course, Indescent Bank and Mahindra and Mahindra, among others, which are losing out in trade today. But what about the broader markets? A lot more in terms of momentum, in terms of gains and losses. So, well, coming down to your broader markets. Wellspun Corp up 13%. Trent on the back of earnings up another 12%. Lakshmi Vilas Bank, Symphony, Jamna Industries, all of them doing very well. SKF India on the other hand looking at a decline of around 6%. Avas Financiers, 2000, one of the top stocks on 2019 is under pressure today. Gujarat Alkali uh, on yet another day of well, losses coming through as is the case for Sri Renuka and Gayatri projects. But let's move on and talk about what's happened with the course of the day and rather the course of the week. And it has certainly been a very strong week. We saw the Nifty advance by around 3.7%, wiping out all the budget day losses. And GSW Steel, Tata Steel, BPCL and Bajaj Finance standing out. A lot of metal companies actually were standing out considering we are looking at a normalization of trade in Chinese commodity markets uh, once and now that they're back online. We have a little bit of weakness in ITC, in fact further weakness of course, Aisha Motors and TCS among others which are losing out in trade but as you can see the momentum clearly is with the gainers. Uh, the picture is not very different when it comes to the broader markets on a weekly basis. So we have Westman Corp, Shilpa Medicare, Kaplan Point Laboratories, Dishman Garbogens. A lot of stocks from the pharma and pharma space were advancing and with good momentum too. Gathi project uh, were well, locked in a series of lower circuits, which is why we're looking at a 22% decline here. Jammu and Kashmir Bank. Uh, well, GSK Pharma and India Bulls Real Estate, among others, which are losing out in trade. But uh, that said, let's take a look at all the events that did shape out uh, the, well, the way markets uh, were well, trended. So on Monday, India's manufacturing sector activity climbed to an eight-year high, driven by a sharp rise in new business orders. IHS Market India manufacturing PMI rose to 55.3 in January from 52.7 in December. And on Tuesday, Bharti Airtel reported a third straight quarterly loss, even as revenues bounced back with a rise in tariffs and customer additions. Wednesday was a busy day as well. Avenue Supermarts launched a QIP to raise nearly 4,000 crores. We had the cabinet approve amendments to the Banking Regulations Act to give the Reserve Bank of India greater control over cooperative banks, the CEO and appointments and of course bank audits and even the power to take control if financial health deteriorates. Reliance Home Finance and Reliance Commercial Finance submitted a fresh resolution plan to its consortium of lenders hoping to restart operations. An activity in India's services sector rose to the highest level in seven years as well. IHS market uh, services PMI rose to 55.5 in January from 53.3 in December. And on Thursday, Reserve Bank of India took center stage. The Monetary Policy Committee left key policy rates unchanged and maintained the accommodative stance. And in the hope of first rate transmission, the Reserve Bank announced long-term repo operations of three years and five-year tenures. Meanwhile, the coronavirus outbreak continues to wreak havoc in China and other countries. As of today, the death toll is at 636. Now, these are just some of the events that shaped up markets. But what are we looking at as we move into next week? And on a technical level, based on what the options uh, data is indicating when it comes to the benchmarks, we're currently looking at levels and a range within 12,000 and 12,200 based on an accumulation of open interest in options. We do have a significant amount of writing around the 12,000 mark, but on the lower end, there's plenty more in terms of support. And on the higher end, if it's not 12,200, it's 12,300. So we're looking at a tightness of range and we're likely to see uh, indices remain range bound. 
But based on that, let's also take a look at all the well, events that are lined up next week. So the fierce battle for Delhi Assembly seats will take place tomorrow, of course, that's the Saturday. But the election results will be out on Tuesday, the 11th of February. And on Wednesday, we'll be watching out for some key economic data, that is CPI inflation and, of course, IIP growth numbers, which will be out by then. And on to earnings, we have Gale, Grassam Industries, Coal India, Hindalco, and BPCL, all commodity-based names, which will report numbers next week. So we're moving to the final leg of earnings, and, uh, well, possibly, uh, well, we can from there on see and perhaps expect a little bit of decline in volatility, which has been on the rise off late. But on that note, it's a wrap on the markets, but there's lots more lined up. Stay tuned to Bloomberg.